to arms, brothers! We are the light that shall drive back the darkness! Trading card games have been around for a long time, and we've seen a lot come and go. With Magic the Gathering being the top dog in the physical card space, closely followed by Pokemon TCG, but a new opponent has entered the ring. Warhammer, Age of Sigmar, Champions. Does this TCG have what it takes to stand on its own, or will it go into the bargain bin sooner than expected? Let's shuffle our decks, deal out a hand, and find out. We The company behind Warhammer Age of Sigmar Champions, let's just call it Champions for short, may sound familiar. It's the studio Play Fusion, who created an original card game before this one called Lightseekers. Lightseekers was a transmedia card game that existed in both digital and physical space that worked with cards via a scanning AR feature. Champions borrows heavily from this previous game's design, and it works relatively well. The cards themselves are based in the Warhammer universe spells and units that exist in the tabletop game are present in Champions. Spells like Emerald Life Swarm, Arcane Bolt, and units like Corn Blood Letters and Hex Wraiths are playable cards within the game. The portraits are also great on the cards themselves, making use of the dark fantasy art style of the Warhammer universe itself, pulling from what I assume is a huge back catalog of artwork, as well as adding in some new ones along the way. The card game features four different core factions, each with their own playstyle. Death, Order, Destruction, and Chaos. Each faction has their own unique cards to play and use, different champions to field, and so forth. Of course, there are universal cards that anyone can play as well. The goal in Champions is to defeat your opponent. You do this by creating a 38 card deck. I know that seems like an odd number for a card game, but allow me a moment to explain. Your deck consists of 30 core cards. There are units, abilities, and finally, spells. The other eight are on the board itself and never get shuffled into your core 30 card deck. These are your champions. You place each one in a different lane, to which there are four lanes. The last cards you place are your blessings. Four powerful cards you place at random beneath these champions. Blessings become activated once certain requirements are met for each champion, which I'll explain a bit later. The champions in each lane are either wizards, warriors, or both. This determines the cards you can play in that lane. The game has a lot of these champions. Most are faction specific. Some have unique passive or activatable abilities. You don't attack these champions directly. They cannot be removed from the game and they don't have health. Instead, you have a base health pool of 30, which can go higher or lower depending on each champion's cost. Whenever damage is dished out, you subtract it from your master health pool. The blessings are powerful cards put below each champion at random. When you play a card in that champion's lane, if it meets the requirements in the top left corner of said champion, you rotate the champion counterclockwise. Once four certain types of cards or requirements are played, you flip over the blessing attached to that champion and gain its effects. Some are passive permanent bonuses, others are limited buffs or in some cases, have multiple activatable abilities to use before being exhausted. You play cards using actions. Unlike Pokemon TCG, Magic the Gathering, and even Hearthstone, there are no resources in Champions per se. Instead, you're given two actions per turn, to play a unit, ability card, use a heroic action, or cast a spell. Some cards have an instant effect, like ability cards. However, unit and spell cards follow an innovative formula. At the start of your turn, any unit or spell cards played last turn rotate counterclockwise. Then their abilities kick in for X amount. Some of these cards deal direct damage to your opponent. Others cause you to gain health or draw cards. It all depends on the number in the top left corner of the card and its flavored text. For every action you don't use at the end of your turn, you draw cards. There are some cards that allow you to gain more actions or draw cards, but these seem rare. The two actions per turn mechanic is what makes the game really shine, making each turn as equally as important as the next, playing a major role in your tactics in deciding strategy. Do you play cards or draw cards? Since the resource of every action is always two per turn, it makes for a more enjoyable game, where in card games that have playable resources like lands or energy can cause the game to start off relatively slow and ramp up quickly toward the end. 
Turn 10 on a Magic the Gathering game, for example, can get pretty bonkers depending on how much land you have. This two action per turn system makes for a better overall experience, making the pace of the game better balanced for the entire length of the match. Warhammer Age of Sigmar Champions also features a fully digital version for free to download on Android, iOS, Steam, and Nintendo Switch. This digital game is identical to the physical version in every way. However, there's great innovative integration with the physical card game itself. This isn't the first game to do something like this. In Pokemon TCG, you get a QR code to scan that comes in a physical pack of cards you purchase. This nets you a digital booster pack of that set to add to your Pokemon digital collection. Champions does one better. Instead of giving you a random pack of cards via a QR code, each card itself has a unique digital code along the borders, giving you that exact card, not a random pack of cards. If you scan cards you already have, or even your friend's cards, it unlocks additional in-game rewards, like digital packs, avatar picks, or more in-game currency. The digital version of the card game is great, allowing you to build decks, view your collections, do daily or weekly challenges to obtain more digital cards, and of course, you can buy digital packs in the in-game store with premium or free currency, earned by simply playing matches. The digital version of Champions is well-polished, easy to understand, has fun attack animations, and is really functional. There's only really two cons to the digital version itself. First are the microtransactions, which can be a little aggressive, especially on the Steam version of the game. Secondly is the music. The consistent drumming gets old fast, and you'll be quickly muting the music in-game. Warhammer Age of Sigmar Champions has a lot of great ideas. Combine this with the rich and deep Warhammer universe, and you have the makings of a great card game that's different and unique enough to hopefully stand against the two big behemoths that are Magic the Gathering and Pokemon. At the time of this review, the card game currently has three sets. The base set, Onslaught, and most recently, Savagery. If you're looking for a fun and new card game that has both physical and digital elements, you should definitely check out Warhammer Age of Sigmar Champions. For more videos like this and everything else gaming related, you're already in the right place. You're on shacknews.com.